Right, so we're now live. Andy Mead from Mead New Homes talking to Paul Sams from Dutton Gregory. How are you doing, Paul? Well, living the dream, living the dream. How about you, sir? <laughs> I'm good, thank you, mate. Um, I've already had your compliance team on the phone saying that they're, they're ready and waiting with the off button um, due to your outspokenness. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I won't say anything. Well, I'm trying to think. I won't say anything that Piers Morgan wouldn't say. That that probably cause them to cut up, cause a power cut now. <laughs> I'm going to say that's automatically <laughs> sent them into into shivers. But no, mate, was, um, how was Christmas for you and the family? Good. It was good. It was good. Um, Different. Ate too much. Didn't drink enough. Um, but yeah, in the circumstances, it was good. How about you? Yeah, same, mate. It's it just it was different, wasn't it? I mean, I was supposed to have my mum and dad over for Christmas Day, but for obvious reasons, they couldn't come over, which was a shame. But hey, look, you've got to do what you've got to do to to protect the to, to protect the elderly ones. So it was a bit different, but I'd rather I'd rather have it that way, and then see them all in the summer when we can have a big barbecue rather than have a couple of people missing around the table because unfortunately stuff's happened. So it's um it's just doing the right thing, isn't it? I think. You know, it, the fact is that you're at home, I'm at home. If most people stay at home and don't mess around, we'll get through this much quicker than, you know, dare I say it, there are certain countries around the world, like you need to see all the problems I had in America earlier this week. They're bound to have a more of a COVID spike there because they had people wandering the streets without masks on. Oh, it's just, I just don't, it's just, I don't get it. And people think, I mean, we, won't, we won't make this into a COVID conversation, but I think people... People think that they're immune to getting it, and maybe they are, but they're not immune to carrying it. And that's the problem is, you know, the likes of my mum and dad, people's parents, you know, that they maybe not be as strong as the likes of me and you and the younger generation, and they're the ones that we need to protect. So I think you're doing the right thing. I like the fact she said younger generation and make out that I'm old. <laughs> like, Thanks. It's going to go well. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be one of those calls. Right, right, so who is Paul Sams and who are Dutton Gregory? Talk us through us. Oh, well, me, I, I, I'll tell you the line that I like to say to my partners, which I haven't had a chance to say at all today. When they ask who I am, I say I'm a nationally recognised multi award winning published author. And that's that's normally the answer I give to my wife when I haven't put the bin out or anything like that. In fact, I never put the bin out. I, I may, she'll see this, so I may as well tell the truth. Um, but I'm head of the property department at Dutton Gregory. We're a leading South Coast law firm dealing with all sorts of legal issues for private individuals and companies, including obviously a lot of property, so residential, commercial, development, equity release, you name it, property-wise we do it, whole range of litigation services, so if something has gone wrong in your life or you need assistance in that, we do that. Um, also all the way through to dealing with wills and probate, personal injury, clinical negligence, uh, we've even got a childcare department. We are as multifunctional as you can get. We're like a Swiss army knife in a way. Just not as pointy. <laughs> but yeah, a bit more approachable. Um, I mean, we, me and you have worked together for, for, a, for a number of years. So, um, I mean, uh, we've got a, a great relationship in terms of, we just say it as it is, you know, we're both from the north. I think you're from Sunderland, aren't you? <laughs> Don't say that. No, 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 no. no. Oh, where's the off button? <laughs> no, Paul's from Newcastle, so we won't, we won't talk about football. Me being from Leeds, we won't talk about football either. Although we did beat you 5-2. Um, yeah, I was you... weird. As soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, here it goes. <laughs> um, one of my good clients, um, I emailed him as soon as the match was over and went, just to save you the trouble, and sent him the results because he's a massive Leeds fan. So Strange, I didn't even think of you when we, were, when we were playing, which was bizarre, and it was only literally yesterday. And I thought, oh, it's called with Paul, and he's a Newcastle, Newcastle fan. <laughs> Why didn't I call him? But anyway, so lockdown three, from a company point of view, from a from a personal point of view, how are you coping? How's the business doing? Um, business is fine because we got used to it, I suppose, during lockdown one and then lockdown two, which was for that one month, which wasn't really a lockdown. It was like a sort of extended holiday in a way because the kids went to school. Um, this week started off well. I, I said, well, I'll work from home on the Monday because we've got to work from home. So... Um, my wife went into the office because my wife's one of my partners and she went into the office just because she had to do a bit of printing and took the kids to school, brought the kids home. And then as soon as I got in, it said there's going to be an announcement at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, Boris said, stay at home some more. Kids kids are going to be homeschooled. So I'd like to think I've got my mortarboard out of the loft and I was like busy, ready to teach the kids. But I'll be honest, Sarah, my wife's 
Bless has taken the lead role in that. I did try this morning with the maths, but I found that very hard. So the sooner the kids go back to school, the better for my own sanity. But business-wise, no different. Phones on divert to my home number. Got my dual screen set up. Clients should see a you know a seamless process. Yeah, I, mean, I think we've we've noticed over the last two or three years. I mean, a lot of stuff you do with your clients pretty much is is online or through Zoom calls like we're having like we're having now, isn't it? So you, you've not really had to adapt dramatically in terms of I know you have in terms of where you're working from, but the actual practice and what you do in terms of most of what you do is online. I think, isn't it? Um, I've got to say, it's rare that well, once upon a time when I first started out back in the day. Um, you went to no, if you wanted, to, yes, yeah. When you wanted to do a local search, you had to get your colouring pens out and colour in the plan. I always remember I coloured in a plan once, and the client saw it on the file and said, "Why have you coloured that in blue?" I said, "That's the road." He went, "Oh, I thought that's because it was the River Itching, which it was. I hadn't realised it wasn't the road, um, but I was young and innocent back then, um, and everything was paper driven. Now, paper is such a rarity. I get my post scanned to me each day. We've got a post scanning team that scan it. And my post today is mainly the only documents I need, which are transfer documents from seller solicitors once we've completed things. Everything else we do electronically. And it's great because I I don't have a, you know, I, I know firms sadly who are not so technologically advanced as ourselves. And you call them and they're saying, oh, I'm really sorry, but I haven't got the file. I'm working from home, but I've gone into the office next Tuesday so I could exchange with you then. It's like, don't you have an electronic copy that you could use? And you just yeah, hear the, yeah. the, the emptiness at the end of the phone. It is, it is bizarre how, I mean, in, in any industry, and, and I've, I've noticed this since I've started doing my own thing, is that there are ones that have moved on and taken and embraced the um, technology, and there's others that just haven't moved on at all and have stayed doing what they've always done and it's um it's, it's a bizarre scenario when you're talking to some solicitors and they say well i'm working from home and i haven't got the file with me could be on the computer that's it yeah so what, what, what are you doing so you just sat there playing tetris or something um so, too advanced. <laughs> yeah um so um i think from from my point of view in terms of an agent acting on behalf of a developer to recommend you as a solicitor has always been a positive for me because i know that the work is going to get done and the clients are going to be able to contact and speak to you and deal with you rather than having to leave messages, wait for you to get your files and what have you. You're always, you've always been approachable and easy to get hold of and um, throughout all the transactions we've been working with. That's kind of you to say, and I think that, that goes to the entire team. It's not just me. It is very much a team yeah. effort. You know, while I'm speaking to you now, there will be people who are there go, oh, my God, I can't get hold of him. I need to speak to him about probably something that's completely insignificant that can wait an hour or so. But when you're at the minute, part of the, part of the issue with the property market at the minute is that buyers, bless them, have nothing else going on in their life. There is no football for them to go to. There is no pub to go to on the Friday night. There's no nightclubs for those that go to nightclubs. I vaguely remember them years ago. Um, the last time I went to a nightclub, you could still smoke in them. That tells you how long ago it was. Um, and because, But because the property market's open and because people want to move, coupled with the stamp duty holiday, which I think is a bit of a MacGuffin, I don't think that's necessarily driving as much interest as people would think, but it is there, people will focus more on their conveyances and it's is i've got this horrible phrase that i use for my team and they, any of them are watching it will roll their eyes at this point about one of my cliches but i say it's seconds of your debt if the agent calls and you don't answer that call or the client calls they will call someone else who will tell them a different story i'm sure it's possibly the truth but it'll have a twist on it and if they haven't heard it from you there's a problem and so you've just mm. got to be good at getting back to people that's something i try and preach Try and do it myself, and I know the team always do it as well. Yeah, and then obviously with with what's going on, there's you know we're always dealing with third parties, whether it be banks, building societies, um, local authorities, and I've noticed over the last four or five, last three months, I'd say how how much the banks, building societies, local authorities have up their game in terms of working remotely. Um, and help to buy. I mean, you know, help to buy in, when we were looking at March, April, May when we first went into lockdown. The help to buy system was horrendous in terms of their backlog and what happened. But now they've got back to normal and they're working normally. Are you finding that with the banks and the building sites as well? Um, 
the banks are far better than they were when we had lockdown one it would have been easier for me to actually go and see the pope in the vatican city than it would to get a redemption figure out of certain lenders and um, because they moved all of the people that are doing redemptions on the redemptions team to the mortgage holiday team now i find that lenders are so slick i'll give you an example i had a client who wanted to sell off part of his garden as a development and there was a charge in favor of a particular lender that should remain nameless but think a national lender if that gives you a clue a big, um, one. A big one that might have the word nation in it um but they were I but they might be quite wise is that the one yes that, that might, right. be, might be <laughs> um they um i had to contact them now before a couple of years ago if i'd done this it would have been an arduous task of getting them to get a response now because people are at home and they could focus on things without dare i say corporate oversight in a way they had a they've got oversight but they've got not their boss breathing down their neck that seemed far more productive and i got a result in probably two weeks but i got that through lockdown i don't this is lock, sort of lockdown two as i call it in november december time that we had i don't think i would have got that if they were going into their office and it was yeah. a great result yeah. lenders have been great i must admit local authorities some of them have up their game some are sadly letting people down badly there are a lot of local authorities around the country who right for whatever reason their land charges departments are not able to turn things around the, i had a list sent to me the other day there's certain local authorities uh, certainly devon and cornwall had issues that seems to have been resolved uh, for some of the ones sort of more doncaster whole way were having issues i know they've gone into sort of a, a backward spiral test valley where i live they seem to be fluctuating from being 65 days to 10 days depending on how quickly you want to have a search and if you've got a lender that needs to have a search so the likes of dare i say it nationwide so don't but natwest hsbc precise just to name three they require a local search rather than search insurance those are my concerns when it comes to the stamp duty holiday of getting local searches back for those particular lenders and my advice to clients is if if you're going to go with those lenders because don't get me wrong they're great lenders they offer great rates I've my own house mortgages from that west for instance on a bank with hsbc um that's not an invitation for someone to try and hack my account well, well actually they can if they want there's no money in it <laughs> yes. uh, the kids all of it but when it comes down to it if a lender isn't prepared to accept search insurance and someone like nationwide santander other lenders do people will go to that lender to make sure they don't have to pay the stamp duty because the extra money they pay out on the mortgage over a five-year term might be saved by the stamp duty depending on what they're doing yeah and i think as you're saying you're talking about search insurance i mean especially on new build developments the, the good thing with we've done gregory and as opposed to some of the other solicitors that that we've used or have come across in the past is they won't other solicitors won't use or won't encourage their clients to use a search insurance which one is cheaper than an actual search it's more reliable than a search i would have thought in terms of that's an actual insurance and if the lend if the building societies or your mortgage lender are prepared to accept it why would you not want to save time doing it the problem is that searches um for a lot of lawyers are like the comfort teddy bears that kids have and they go i must have searches because i always love it when people say can i have an update and so what do you want an update on it's minus two outside i'm working at home it's quite nice inside because i've got the radiator on um but you know let's have some specific questions but with searches they give you specific answers to the planning history to the property but it's very rare i can probably count on the fingers left on my hands the number of times the searches i've done over the years where i've actually revealed the problem and on a new build you get the planning history from the uh, selling developer because the planning history there, there isn't a planning history other than the planning they've given you now there might be the odd situation really rare where something comes up but if that does you've got an insurance that backs you up if you, yeah, if you have a look at the search, if you've missed something on a search, it's your professional indemnity insurance that's going to cover you, not the policy you've got on file. And the, you would have thought a, a, a developer worth his salt, if they're going to spend five, six, seven million pounds on a piece of land, they're going to have done a search on that land to make sure it's yeah. it's, 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 it's viable. So, um, yeah, so search insurance is, is one thing that, we've, that I always advocate with clients that are buying through me. Um, and especially if um, the lenders, because I think there's three or four lenders that don't uh, don't accept them, but the majority of them do. So it's definitely worthwhile having looking at the search insurance indemnities because uh, they're actually cheaper as well, aren't they, than the actual searches? 
a, a pack of searches with all of the searches you can do about 300 quid give or take um search insurance we've got a block policy that we use um which is considerably less than that yeah it, it, right. it's not it's not it's not it's not even 100 quid so yeah, right. it's a major saving and it's the time saving you yeah, know, fin I'm, financially and time saving as well is you know trying to save money when you're buying a your house is always is always a benefit but time constraints when you're buying a property because we we seem to be so antiquated in terms of how long it takes to buy a property the whole process how long it takes when necessarily it doesn't need to take as long as it as it does take now, i would say that people say how quick will it be i thought well, it depends on the parties but it's normally the holdups of people and money yeah it's rare that it's the law very rare it's the law because mm -hmm. lawyers and i'll say this i've got a great team of lawyers that work with me I, I work with great teams of lawyers on the other side of things lawyers by their very nature are trained to do their job so they should be able to overcome most issues there are some bad ones like they're out there anywhere um some might say i'm bad but i track them down and make sure i have a word um so they haven't cut me off yet um, well, I I had a bit of a jutter on the screen then i think <laughs> <laughs> but you know it, it's money and people that cause the problems either people haven't got the money or people are just actually awful some people are just awful that's that's human nature if we're all the same it'd be very very boring yeah yeah so help to buy big change in the help to buy system then in terms of from the first of april um only first time buyers can get help to buy but they've changed their paperwork haven't they? there's a lot more scrutiny i think there's more paperwork but i, I was saying this to someone in the team the other day I, sadly i've done this job i used to have hair I used to be a lot thinner. I probably used to be a lot wealthier as well, but I think that might be kids. I've dealt with the Thames Valley scheme where you could get 50% equity loan. I then dealt with, I think that was replaced by Home Buy Direct, where you could get 30%, where the developer put in 15 and the government put in 15%. So you got 30% equity loan. I then dealt with the, oh, what was it after that? First buy, which is 25%, 12.5% from the developer, 12.5% from the government, the yeah. likes of Barrett, Bovis, Bellway, Linden, all the big developers had their own version of a sort of equity scheme which helped out with things. And they all had their own criteria. It, this is just a long line of paperwork that I'm used to. There are some tweaks. But as I mentioned to you, that it's the difference now is on regional price differences. That's the thing that's never been there before. And that's the thing that I'm slightly concerned about. Yeah, it's making sure the buyers understand as well, don't they? It's that, it's especially the area where, where, or where I'm based at the moment in, in Berkshire, we're right on the border of, we've got a scheme in Slough, which also you're aware of, you're working on a, a number of cases for us in Slough, but it's right on the border of the London help to buy and the, the not London help to buy. And the, and the difference is massive in terms of affordability um, the threshold that you can go up to. So it's making sure the buyers understand really at point one what the area they're buying into and what their criteria allows them to buy. And I, I'm slightly concerned that I don't mind sharing this now that I contact is the help to buy agent for the South and Southeast uh, between Christmas and New Year and said, could you tell me what is classified as Southwest? Because Southwest is 349,000 is the cap, and Southeast is 437,600. Not that I've got it written next to me to remind me. And the, <laughs> the difference being great in that South of my case is 88,600 between Southeast and Southwest in the maximum cap of value property you can buy. And I said to them, what's the difference between Southeast and Southwest? And they said, we don't know yet. It hadn't filtered yeah. through them on the help desk. And that, that's a big concern because I live in Hampshire on the, I say I'm in Test Valley. If I go out into my garden, I'm in the New Forest. Um, I don't own the New Forest. That's just an aspiration that I'm working to. Um, but there is that subtle difference between boundaries. Like my next door neighbours have their bins collected by New Forest District Council as opposed to Test Valley. But if that was southwest and I'm southeast, automatically, by moving a couple hundred yards down the road, I've got an £88,000 difference in what I could get for the maximum value property. And some of the big boy developers, I imagine they might have a site that might cross those two lines. There are properties that cross between England and Wales, but no one's quite sure if you pay English stamp duty or Welsh stamp duty, or both. Yeah. So we need to get some clarification on it. 
but it, 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 as you say, it, it's slightly more complicated, but it's what makes life, you know, complications. I love them. It's what makes yeah, life no, it, it would be boring if, if, if it was easy, wouldn't it? And that's why I think if you're a buyer and you're you're unsure, is is make sure the, the agent that you're buying from knows your help to buy system, you've got a solicitor that under, understands the help to buy system, and you've got a mortgage advisor as well that also understands the help to buy system. Because when I was working with a client um, in in November for a, a, a December completion, and I was having to help him fill out the help to buy forms for his client because he didn't understand the help to buy. Now, help to buy has been going, was it four years? Three years, four years? Seven years now, technically. Oh, that time flies seven years um and he didn't understand the help to buy system and the, and the paperwork that needs to go in and it was just i say if you get somebody that understands the help to buy system it makes your job as a buyer so much easier if you've got a solicitor that understands the help to buy system because there's a lot of paperwork you have to put in to help to buy on behalf of the client that help to buy if there's a, an apostrophe wrong if there's a um, full stop wrong if there's a letter wrong they, th they send it straight back. So it's not a case of, can you double check this for me? They send it back and then it goes back to the bottom of the pile. So it's it's getting it right first time is the key we've helped to buy. Um, very much so. And it, it's making sure that people have got their mortgage offer right. Because I, I work with some great mortgage bro uh, brokers, far too many to mention. But I noticed that every developer has a panel of solicitors generally and a panel of mortgage advisors. And I always say to clients, look, if you don't pick a panel solicitor for your development, that's fine because the law is the law. That ain't going to change. It should be slicker if you pick a panel solicitor because they know what they're doing with new build. But please, please pick a panel broker because that panel broker will understand the help to buy and the new build nuances that other brokers don't. Um, whereas other brokers go, oh, well, you wanted to borrow 400,000. I'll get you a mortgage for 401,000 so you can cover your costs. No, no, no. And to help to buy, it's got to be 400,000 if that's what's on the authority to proceed. You know, you've got to have it spot on. And it's, it's those little nuances, like anything in life. Um, I had a client ask me about uh, some uh, pension trustee work the other day. And I said, look, I could do it. I'd, I've done it in the past. But you're much better off going to my colleague here because she does it all the time. She'll know what she, you know, she knows it really slickly. It's a bit if I, if I had yeah, to go and ride a unicycle. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have a go at riding a unicycle. Um, that might be a bit of a challenge someone's going to give me now, but I wouldn't be as good as someone who does it all the time. Yeah, and I've just got a, uh, there's a, a note coming here from um, from Luke it says some of the London off head office based developers are still advertising southeast based properties above the new threshold for the area. So there's an awful lot of people that haven't got a clue about the new scheme, about how the new scheme works, and you know what the, the differentials and the, and the thresholds are. So um, it's it is Ryan. It's not just a lay person that doesn't understand it in some instances it's the so-called professionals that don't fully understand it because they've not they've not checked into the into the legislations and the laws of it i think that dare i say I'm, I'm always reluctant to blame it but i think it might be part to do with covid that if we hadn't had covid we would have had a slicker rollout of this new system because i must admit i'm i shouldn't say it but i will i do get slightly concerned with some people who've had help to buy to help them onto the ladder and then get help to buy again. That to me seems to be a teensy weensy bit over the top with the system. Use it once, great, that's fine. I've had many clients have done that, paid the money back, fantastic. It's given them that helping step. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, it has made me money, my firm money, everyone in the economy has benefited from it. But using it again, I think it was though too many people were using it again as like a crutch. And that's why the government brought in for first time buyers, which I think it was intended originally, no other scheme in history has ever been used for any buyer. And the criteria for the last, the old help to buy, as we call it, was very low. As in, you had a pulse, you had a job, you were buying for less than 600, it's yours. Yeah. But as I mean, it, it did help the economy, didn't it? And as you, as you say, you know, it's, it's, it's helped people move. Whether they've exploited that is is a different matter but hey look it's we're, we're at a stage now where it's only first time buyers and it's only people that fit the criteria that can actually get it so it's i think it's a scheme that works i mean so for, for, for a first time buyer i think it's an exceptional scheme and it has helped the economy it has helped the um the, the bars get onto the ladder but it, it's been brilliant and um up i don't know the latest figures but it was self-funding 
up until the beginning of last year where it got to self-funding because people were paying their money back and the government could plow that back in. So it was almost, yeah. you know, it was a free scheme in the grand scheme of it um, to make money because of course it, it keeps the developers employed, the sales staff, the electricians, the plumbers, or the supply people, you know, you name it, you and me, we all benefit from it. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's for, every, for every residential house sale in the UK, it adds just shy of £10,000 to the economy. Yeah. That's why I want the house that, market to keep going. Because any money I get, I have to spend on... Um, the kids. Stuff. Sarah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Sarah will disagree on what I spent on her. I'd like to think I bought her. A, a, in fact, she got me a better Christmas present than I got her, I think. So. <laughs> she got me a new watch. I got her a hot chocolate maker. Nice. Oh, yeah. she, <laughs> she definitely dipped out. Um, leaseholds. The other topic this week in the news this week. Um, yeah, in terms of um, legislation. I think being fair to most developers, over the last year, they've, they've got to grips with it, haven't they? And they've righted the wrongs of what some were doing in terms of um, length of the lease and ground rent payables, blah, 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 blah. Um, I think the biggest issue and what has been affecting a lot of people is people that are in older properties that are leasehold properties now, where the leases are running down. And I think, what was it, 80, below 80 years, 75 years, and a lender will be very, very sceptical about lending on it. Um Lenders tend to, well, when I started back in the day when I had hair and was thin and had money, um, we used to worry if a um, term of mortgage was less than 55 years because it was 25 years for your average mortgage plus 30, 25, 55, and you didn't have to worry. Then I think we went to, or oh, maybe if it's 60, we should worry. Then it was 70. Then we remembered as lawyers that there's this problem called marriage value, which long short of it is that when a lease is less than eight years left on it, the landlord get and freeholder gets to share in the increase in value of the leasehold property when it's sold um, through something called marriage value. So a lease extension becomes more expensive. So lenders said, right, 70 years, 80 years we're looking for. Then we wanted more. Then we've had issues with ground rents to do with Section 8 of the Housing Act 1988 that's come in where it suggests that a ground rent more than £250 is not really a ground rent, it's an assured tenancy which means that if you don't pay part of it, so say you're unpaid a quarter, it's 60, £62.50, it's a mandatory ground before a deputy district judge to say, I'd like possession of the property, please. Um, so lenders are panicked about that. I think leasehold needed to be overhauled. I was talking to quite a few people yesterday about the third way of common hold, which a lot of people are pushing, but the guy that I was talking to, the main guy was saying that a lot of people will want to live in something called common hold because it's common. Um, he said if it was called, his joke, Richard Snape, I'll give him his name, Richard says if it was called exclusive hold, it would do much better. But with leasehold changes, they're coming. Developers, in fairness to them, have got their house in order far better than they were. A lot of developers jumped up, I'll name them, because they, they, it's out there. Taylor Wimpy were selling leasehold houses, mainly in the northwest, like, like they were confetti. Everything was leasehold. They struggled so much on the south coast to do it, and then there are issues on the resale of the freehold to the tenants who bought the leasehold properties. Those were houses. Most of the developers in the South Coast ended that within about six months of trying it because it wasn't working for them from a PR point of view. The bigger developers for the past year or so have been offering 999 year leases on their new properties with a peppercorn ground rent or a ground rent that was fixed that wasn't going to go up. So new properties, I think there's no issues with leasehold. The older ones, the legislation is going to change to be more lease owner friendly than freeholder friendly, and we'll have to see what they make of them. Yeah, and, as, and as, as with everything with the government, it's the you know it's, it's how long is it going to be before it happens. But I think the good thing is they're talking about it, but then they and they and they they've obviously identified that it needs to be sorted out. So um, I think, as I said initially. The developers, if you're buying a new leasehold apartment, new leasehold property, they've pretty much got their ship in order. I know when I was at Bovis, it all came out two years ago about, um, I can't remember who it was, it might have been somebody beginning with P. Um, the, the Bovis lease has changed literally overnight from 150 years to 999 years. Um, so um, we were sort of quite forefront in terms of getting it changed and getting it getting it altered straight away and not being in the position of 
being tied in with the other people. So we were never looking at it as a point of view to to make money out of the ground rents. Um, I think so, in developers' defence, developers never really were interested in the ground rents. They no. were interested in freehold reversionary values because everyone is or was. Were there freehold reversionary values? I was talking to a good friend of mine this morning, very involved in property, and he was saying, did I think freehold reversionary values would go down? Said, well, they probably will, but not as much as people are saying, just because people don't necessarily want the hassle of owning freeholds anymore, blocks of flats, because it can be a pain. There's a lot of liabilities, lots of legislation that be in place, but someone's got to own them, and someone's got to look after them. And so we'll just evolve because people evolve. Um, the government can pass some legislation now because, as well as the B, uh, the C word, they've had the B word, where you know Brexit, right for all its rights and wrongs, that's now at an end. I hope. Um, I don't know what we're going to talk about in the news. No Trump, no Brexit, COVID, COVID vaccinations. What we're going to do? You couldn't, you couldn't go through a, a conversation without using the word Trump, could you? <laughs> oh, I did my best. This is, this yeah. is where I'm. This is where all the Twitters and that stuff, the Twittery things start to happen now. It's like, oh, he's talking about Trump. Get him off, get him off. No, no, well, but I, you know, he, he, he has had a knock-on effect around the world. I don't think one man's had as much an effect, um, rightly or wrongly, anywhere as he's had. Um, and, but we'll be free of his presidency come the 20th of January and we'll see what the next guy can do. Yeah, it's all it's all a bit. So, housing market predictions for twenty twenty one. I mean, I've I've done quite a bit of social media, three fact Fridays, and what have you. And I'm always looking at what's happened in twenty twenty and what what the plans are for twenty twenty one. And from my point of view, I think the first quarter is is it started off tremendously well. I mean, I over the Christmas and New Year break, you know, the leads we were getting through on this development, one of the developments we had was just astronomical. I think we had seventy six leads on on one development through Facebook, um, Instagram, um, and, the, and the normal portals, um, and YouTube as well. So um, there's definitely people out there still wanting to buy this, people still wanting to take advantage of, um, I think people want to change their, their lifestyle because of what they've seen happen over the last eight to 10 months in terms of yep. working from home, living from home, um, not being able to do as much in their community and therefore wanting to get maybe into a more rural location. Um, I mean, I've spoken to quite a few developers over the last four or five months in terms there's one that I won't, I won't mention, but yeah, planning approved and they've literally, literally ripped up the plans for the houses and redesigned the houses to incorporate um, home working. Because that's I'm, what I'm quite saying. I'm quite lucky, apart from the fact that I, I never thought people would be seeing my study at home, so I never got round to it's the one room of the house that's not been decorated, so it's these lovely orange walls. Um, and, and that's my wife signed Michael Bublé print behind me, not mine. Uh, just to, just for anyone, because I realise that's in the camera shot. Anyone I've, just noticed I've, got, I've just noticed I've got a Paddington bear. Now, that wasn't there yeah. yesterday, so I think my wife stitched me up and put a Paddington bear so it's on the screen. When I was saying about property lo uh, conveyances wanting local searches like a teddy bear, is that yours in the corner there to give you some moral support? <laughs> give you something to talk to. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm lucky that I was set up at home that I could work in our study. Um, my wife set up in the kitchen, so she's got a corner in the kitchen to work. We did our kitchen last Christmas. We did our one, one of our bathrooms was done last January, February time. So we were all set up for things before COVID, and we were lucky. We've got a big garden, which was great during the summer, and so when we got Easter time, spending time outside, and it was nice during lockdown one to be able to spend time with the kids in the garden, so we could work outside that sort of thing. I think you're right. People have moved to, away from necessarily flats. Gardens are very important. I agree. The first quarter of this year will be stonking. I'm expecting some big numbers to come in, but I don't think it's going to fall off a cliff come April. Um, I'll say it now because we still need to move. And we've still got a lot of land that needs to be built upon. Um, where I am in Hampshire, we've had the added problem of possibly worse than COVID, and it's going to sound ridiculous, possibly worse than COVID with nitrates. And that's held up a lot of planning. And now you have to offset your nitrates that might be causing a problem, if you believe that if there's some conspiracy theories that suggest that it doesn't exist, but there are people that suggest that the moon landing were fake. Um, but nitrates held up a lot of planning, and a lot of planning applications are only going through now for some big, big old sites. And developers, of course, have to build. So if they have to build, they'll have to find a way to sell. Um, 
my prediction is that we'll see price rises this year. Prices will rise, not by very much. They won't stagnate. They'll go up ever so much, maybe not even 1%. And we'll see developers move a lot towards part exchange. Part exchange will become a much bigger driver for developers, which it was 2008, 2009, when there was the last property recession. Now, it won't be driven by recession, it'll be driven by necessity, and developers will work smarter, and buyers will see, well, hang on, they've built a four-bedroom house that's got a study on it, I'll have that, and they can have my three-bedroom terraced house that isn't suited for it, but might be suitable for a first-time buyer. Yeah, um, I, 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 don't think, I don't think you're wrong, and, and there's, you know, whether people, there's still a perception about buying a new home as opposed to buying a second-hand home, there's still, people still don't understand um, the actual benefits of buying a new home. Um, which you know, there's the old stigma that you know they're not built very well. There, there, there's no outside spaces. There's no communal spaces, and the developers are only in it to, to earn money. Um, what people don't understand is that the regulations have changed. The building regulations have changed. The planning regulations have changed. So the developments that are being built now are, are a lot more open. The houses are a lot more sustainable in terms of financial sustainability from economy and. Um, green energy and what have you so th buying a new home is is the right thing to do in my opinion i mean i bought a new home four years ago um and it's i don't think i because it's a blank canvas you can go in and just buy a blank canvas and it's you don't have to worry about spending money on updating the heating system or updating the kitchen or updating the bathroom or something like that. it's all done for you yeah you know but there will be people there are horses for courses on things and obviously i, I deal with a lot of resale and a lot of new builds and I also have for a lot of developers when they're doing smaller sites as well. I think the thing that sums it up is that because everyone's different, everyone wants something different in life. And so new builds can cater for that. Um, resale, you need to have a bit more imagination because you're going to have to do it yourself. To, it's rare you're going to move into a property. Oh, that's brilliant. I would never have picked the orange walls, for instance, um, or the slightly dirty curtains that we've got. But one day I might change them. Um, if I wasn't working so hard, you see, I'd paint the walls, but I can't because I'm just working so much all the time. That's probably the same orange. But if you buy a new property and you send a surveyor into it, the surveyor is going to rate it A all the way through on a home buyer survey because it's the latest regulations. And that's something to bear in mind. It's yeah. going to be more energy efficient, much more energy efficient. You know, I'm having to sit with my radiator on in my 1970s house to stay warm. As soon as I turn that radiator off and open that study door, I'll get like a flood of cold air and, and children and cat. <laughs> and, and, and bless my wife. I've heard the phone go a few times, and she's probably taken some messages for me. We like to say when we work at home together, we're the world's best paid assistants for each other. <laughs> nice, Paul. It's been emotional. It's been great. Um, it's always good talking to you. Um, yeah. I know we'll be in contact again over the next two or three days about some of the clients that we're working together with. So, um, but if anybody is looking for a solicitor. Dutton and Gregory are the guys to speak to. Um, you can contact me directly or Paul through the links that you've seen on here. Um, but have a great new year, Paul. I'm sure it will be as successful as last year and the years before. And we'll um, we'll catch up again very shortly. All right. See you soon. Thanks for today. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Bye.